We now have a half an hour, so roughly five minutes each for them to tell us what they've been doing, what they would like to do in the future, and how much they need your help. Whether we use the light deck. Volker? Yes. So Volker, you're probably looks like you're listed first here. I don't know if you have slides or, or not. Yeah, it should be short. It's just a couple of slides. Um, so we were basically uh, talking about uh, two topics in the uh, in the session. One is basically um, sharing uh, resources, in particular data sets, because uh, there is, as uh, was very evident uh, throughout this meeting, many activities that are uh, that many of the teams are working on, uh, looking at them from different angles. Um, um, yeah, uh, I would I would uh, put up a couple of uh, reminders here in terms of uh, abilities that we've established, and potentially looking into other options to support that, and then. Um, the use of the data template and making sure it stays uh, somewhat coherent was the second large topic discussed um, in the scientific working group session. Okay, where's the, oh, can you go? Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, as a follow-up of last year's meeting, we established a IMC community under the uh, Zenodo repository, basically as a, as a simple entry point for, for sharing information that is relevant to the community. If you click once more over the past year, um, I mean, it has got, it did get some traction, but I think there is definitely potential to expand on that. There's something like 10 data sets, a couple of software packages and the presentation deposited so far. Um, there, yeah, it's in, in principle, uh, uh, building on an existing infrastructure and therefore very easy to deposit data uh, there independently. And then it can just be tagged uh, to this uh, community. It's just serving as a reminder. The second, if you click once more, John, uh, second, um, as a second reminder, we also have a GitHub uh, IM or IMC organization, which again is uh, a vehicle of, uh, in an easily accessible way, uh, finding uh, shared code and so on. So we basically get in touch if you if you have relevant code that we could fork here, so that it becomes visible under the IMC uh, organization in GitHub. Uh, next one, please. Second uh, discussion was about the data template. Um, K1 gave a, a, a good overview uh, of its use, uh, plus the scenario uh, explorer infrastructure in IPCC and many other projects. Um, the widespread use had has also led to problems. Can you click once more? Um, basically, we've across all efforts that uh, have been made in the future, there's basically ten thousands of uh, different variables that have been used. So it's really difficult to keep the overview and avoid reinventing the wheel. We've also uh, have some inconsistencies emerging, for instance, the treatment of bunker fuels and feedstock use and final energy and emissions reporting. In addition, there's also multiple extensions of the data uh, template in various projects on the way. Uh, can you go quickly back once more? This includes, for, for example, reporting of CDR uh, the bunkers and uh, yeah materials uh, feedstock use and so on and so um, there is a benefit of avoiding that everybody does their own extension which are then not necessarily uh, compatible with each other um, and as a basically follow-up we we've uh, agreed basically on two uh, activities on the one hand figure out a, a way of complementing the zenodo and github um, platforms to, to collect metadata on input as well as output data sets um, relevant to the community. So the idea is here really to, to build on existing infrastructures rather than um, inventing something new, which can also be beneficial in terms of interfacing with other communities that may also use these platforms already. Um, and this, uh, the second one uh, on the IM, IMC data template format, there was a suggestion to uh, basically use a divide and conquer approach, establish small working groups in charge of parts of the data, data template, because the discussions around keeping that coherent end up being fairly labor intensive. And ideally, the people in charge of these chunks of the data template would, would uh, uh, ideally be aligned with the research focus here. So if, if there's an interest in the content, then managing basically the data uh, infrastructure around it or the template part around it 
uh, becomes less of a burden, I would argue. And so we uh, essentially would like to add a call for volunteers as part of the next IMC loose ladder. Um, if you wanna, if you have already made, uh, made up your mind and are interested in doing that, excellent, Jessica, then please get in touch. That's it. Great. Thank you so much. Right on time. We are ahead of schedule. Climate Finance Study uh, Work Group, uh, Jay Edmonds, who conveniently is already up here, will talk about that. Right. So um, th this uh, is a report from uh, one of the newer scientific working groups on scenarios for climate-related financial analysis. And if we could go to the next slide, if I'd realized we had five whole minutes, I would have done much more. <laughs> uh, but um, basically, this is a scientific working group whose charter is to facilitate discussion of the potential use and development of integrated assessment modeling scenarios for the financial sector. And so this in, uh, is a group that is built up around uh, the development of scenarios for the finance community. So uh, during the course of our, uh, our, our meeting of the, uh, the working group, uh, and I will put in a plug for next year when we plan to actually have twice that much as much time as we had this year, because I think we had uh, we were we were severely constrained by the uh, uh, by the limitations on time. Uh, there's a lot going on in this in in this scientific working group. So the first thing that we did, uh, we had a um, a report on some of the major activities and probably the largest single activity that is going on uh, within the um, uh, the scientific working group uh, is a research consortium which is led by the Potsdam Institute uh, that uh, is. Uh, dedicated to helping the uh, uh, NGFS or the Network for Greening the Financial System uh, produce scenarios that these, um, uh, the, and let me just step back one step. The Network for Greening the Financial System is a group of about 116 central banks and uh, financial supervisors. Uh, and so these are the central banks of the world. This is the Bank of England, the Bank of France, the Federal Reserve Board of the United States, the Bank of Japan, uh, and so forth through 116 uh, entities. Uh, and they wanted scenarios uh, that they could use for a variety of purposes, but the, probably the single largest, uh, most important of those purposes was for stress testing member banks. Uh, and large financial entities within their jurisdictions. And so uh, these are scenarios that were designed uh, not to be the most likely, but rather to explore uh, the uh, dimensions of uh, the uh, of the unlikely uh, scenarios, both in terms of the uh, climate impacts, uh, which in the parlance of the NGFS is called physical risk, uh, and emissions mitigation, which in uh, the vocabulary of the uh, of the financial community is called transition risk. Uh, it's the same thing, but you know we have different languages for communicating that. So that's the largest single thing going on. It's led by the Potsdam Institute. It has three integrated assessment modeling teams that are associated with it, uh, and uh, uh, and and. Uh, Potsdam is one, YASA is the second, and uh, the uh, uh, Joint Global Change Research Institute is the third. Uh, we also heard from our uh, sponsors. Uh, we heard from uh, the Bezos Earth uh, Fund, uh, that represented by Leon Clark. We heard from the Climate Works, represented by uh, Seth Monteith. Uh, we heard from the European Central Bank. Uh, Mario um, Morali uh, was representing the uh, European Central Bank. Uh, and then we heard from um, SWG uh, members as to other activities that are going on, because this is a very active uh, community. So um, without uh, uh, overly uh, ru uh, running over uh, the five minutes, uh, if you're interested in uh, engaging with this community, either contact uh, Elmar Kriegler uh, or myself uh, or um, Monica and we will make sure that you get on the mailing list and be included uh, in all of our uh, activities. So thank you. Great, thanks, Dan. I understand Elmar was not here with us now because he's broadcasting into a high level uh, finance meeting in uh, Mexico, even as we sit here um, doing our thing. 
So next we have, um, oops, we don't have somebody. So we have two more groups. The scenarios group, I guess, is next, and then the uh, national national scenarios group. Oh, there it is. They just had to reload. Oh no, national scenarios comes first. Sorry. Right. So uh, Sunichiro Fujimori will do the presenting. Looks like. Right. Um. Maybe I should uh, here announce that uh, this is uh, really newest uh, SWG uh, established uh, in this year. Sure. Uh, and well, the original motivation is that, you know, recently in many countries uh, announced uh, the so-called carbon neutrality goals. And also we have an NDC update uh, last year. And uh, we observed that uh, the increasing demand of the national scenarios and and apparently the importance of the national scenarios uh, becomes larger and larger year by year. And so uh, we, we thought that uh, there will be a, a room uh, uh, to, to make this community more meaningful in terms of our national scenarios. And uh, here in this uh, slide, uh, we, we just list uh, maybe uh, some of the examples of, of national scenario and uh, it's only showing MIPS, uh, but I, I believe that there are many, many countries that have own national scenarios. And here we can see, um, yeah, even from uh, several countries' examples, we have uh, commonalities, like, uh, uh, for example, the objective uh, is mostly focusing on uh, carbon neutrality goals. And scenarios, uh, mostly we have uh, like a baseline scenarios and carbon neutrality scenarios. And there'll be some variations, but basically they, they seems to be a, a sort of a default uh, scenarios. And then, um, yeah, time horizons, uh, again, uh, 2050 seems to be the primary focus. And GHG coverage, it's, it's actually amazing uh, for me. Uh, I, I was expecting that many countries would like to see the full GHG emissions profiles, but it seems that uh, to keep the uh, model participations from energy system models, uh, many of the countries are just narrowing the focus uh, for energy related CO2 emissions. Well, can you go to next? Uh, should I do oh, I got myself? It. Uh, sorry. Well, okay. And, and we had uh, many uh, very interesting discussions. And here I, I list uh, some of, uh, of, of such topics. And so, well, my original idea is that we could have a sort of a standardized uh, scenario protocol, which can be implemented in all over the world, in any countries. And uh, that might uh, be uh, quite beneficial for us to, to compare uh, countries each others. But, uh, I, I haven't yet worked uh, in, in so much on these directions, and I, uh, so the pro protocol hasn't yet been um, visible. But I, I, I would like to do push uh, forward in the next year. And the next one is relationships between MIPS and individual national uh, activities. So I, uh, in the previous slide, I, I just showed the MIP as I mentioned, uh, but a MIP is just a part of the uh, national scenario activities. And, and, but it, it, it's also, uh, uh, yeah, uh, it, it, well, to me, it, it, it's easy to access MIPS because they are basically, you know, in uh, academic uh, scientific papers. But uh, we also need to cover uh, beyond that. So that's the second topic. Uh, the GHG coverage, uh, speed, uh, gas coverage, it would be also a concern. If we would like to have a sort of a comparable scenarios among the countries, uh, we might need to have some, uh, you know, uh, limitations in, in GHG coverage. And platform, well, I, I'm expecting that EASA would be hosting the uh, such a national scenario, scenario database as uh, EASA did for AL6. Uh, and IMC template would be, again, uh, the best uh, platform uh, for us to compile the all the information. Uh, and finally, capacity building. I think we cannot uh, discuss about the national scenarios without touching upon uh, capacity building because, you know, uh, in, in developing countries, it, it still needs uh, a lot of capacity building uh, if they want to have an own national scenarios. So, uh, uh, as I said, uh, it, it's definitely a closely related uh, topic, and we may want to do much more on, on that work as well. That's all. Great.
Thanks, Shinichiro. That was great. Okay, last but not least, we have our own Detlev and Viren. Oops. Yeah, so we jump again. One back. One back. Yeah, it, it doesn't go back from here to the slides or load. Okay. Now, so uh, this this is the scenario uh, we're in group, but we didn't prepare uh, slides because we just had uh, the whole discussion on scenarios uh, before the lunch. And um, so this is just a reminder of uh, some of the things that we discussed in the scientific working group. And I also would like to call uh, call out that uh, Kevin Ria is is uh, co-leading this uh, scientific working group. Um, so. We discussed, uh, first of all, the SSPs. And uh, as you heard this morning, the idea is that we would update the economics and the uh, demographic projections of the SSPs. Our aim is to have a first draft available in February uh, so that we can then do also a community review and try to finalize these scenarios uh, in spring uh, next year. After that, uh, we would like to, those scenarios to be implemented by the integrated assessment modeling groups. And so what we are envisioning is somewhere around March to have an, a meeting of the in, with the integrated assessment modeling group that are interested in implementing these scenarios and to discuss a bit uh, how we're going to do it compared to the last time. Do we have to change these protocols that we developed last time a bit uh, to update them to the current situation? Are there more parameters that we would like to harmonize? Um, what would be the common uh, base year? And so maybe uh, uh, around March next year, we would have an online workshop, I guess, uh, of a day to discuss this among the teams. Um, yeah. Uh, we also have to think of how, it's, if we have done the updates and if we have also run uh, relevant scenarios, how we potentially could also transfer that data uh, and make it useful for CMAP 7. And in that sense, the IPCC workshop that was also presented uh, this morning uh, on scenarios is, is extremely relevant uh, to find out uh, what are the user needs of the different working groups of IPCC uh, with respect to scenarios. Um, is, are the current scenarios useful? Do we have to change them, for instance, uh, by running an, an overshoot scenario? Um, there are several organizations in addition to us involved in uh, choosing scenarios. Uh, ECMIP uh, is, in, is involved. Uh, there are several organizations under the CMIP 7 panel that are uh, dealing with scenario analysis. Uh, obviously, IPCC has an interest, and we also have so we also have to think a little bit about how to best uh, coordinate that activity so that we can ensure that uh, the scenarios that we are going to develop are most useful for everybody. The thing that we also discussed uh, in the uh, breakout group was the idea that scenarios are critical also as a connection between the different working groups of IPCC that didn't work uh, as. Uh, well, as we had hoped in the previous report, um, we would like to contribute to see uh, that uh, improve further. Um, and again, the IPCC workshop might be a place to discuss that. Um, and, um, in addition to the coordination, the timeline of all these activities is also quite critical. Uh, we heard from uh, Brian O'Neill, who is, uh, in, was at um, one of the meetings of the CMIP panel, that um, if relevant scenarios should be absolutely ready by 2025, um, and we have to think uh, how we um, make sure that we are in time uh, for that ambition. And we have to realize that once we are done, still quite some work needs to be done uh, with uh, harmonizing, for instance, with historical data, uh, both for land use and for emissions. Uh, these are the things that we have been discussing in the scientific work group. Uh, the most critical activities are related now to the update of the SSPs, which is coming up uh, relatively soon. Great. Thanks, Zetlev. Uh, that was a great, great update. There were actually quite a bit ahead of schedule, thankfully. Uh, 